Hi everyone, my name is uh, Yves Marie Fontaine. Thank you for being with us. Today is uh, March 21st, 2021. Uh, I just want to remind you that uh, today we, we are celebrating uh, World Poetry Days, but just before, I have to remind you that uh, a decision to proclaim uh, 21st March as a World Poetry Day was adopted during a uh, UNESCO 31st session held in Paris in 1999. One of the main objectives uh, of the day is to support linguistic uh, diversity to poetry and uh, expression and to offer endangered language the opportunity to be heard within the community. The observance of the World Poetry Days is also meant to encourage a return to the old tradition of poetry recitals to promote the teaching of poetry to restore a dialogue between poetry and the other arts such as uh, dance music and painting and to support a small publisher today to celebrate this uh, wonderful day we're gonna have a conversation with uh, talina rachel queen and rashid white hi queen how are you doing as a poet? Well, it means that our genre is really important. We spent a lot of time in literary arts talking about, you know, Shakespeare and other kinds of literary forums, the novel, the, um, the essay, which has become critically important. Exactly. Um, and poetry is a is a is a historical document it is a healing document It's something that changes the lives of people all of the time and so i think it is suitable that this um celebratory historical um just so plastic plastic okay. meaning like having a multifaceted kind okay. of like it's water it can fit into any kind of exactly. situation. And so I think because of that, it is appropriate to recognize it in a way um, that is being celebrated all over the world simultaneously. Even in school today, we see like uh, they neglect poetry. And can you, before we get to that, can you tell us a little bit how poetry was introduced to you as a younger? Um, I started writing poetry at five years old. And I, I like to tell people that because most children don't know how to read yet okay. at five years at old. Five. And so um, my grandfather was a poet. Okay. Um, his name is Charles Harris. We call him Duke. He also played saxophone and flute and he ice skated and things. Everything okay. that I wanted to do, I think for sure he's like the first person I ever loved. Has he influenced okay. me? Um, a great deal and so um, my introduction to poetry before any other teacher or person in the world is my grandfather okay. and so that's that's how I came to it and in your life in general what does poetry occupy in your entire life is that really helpful for you guide you in your life you know what um, when a person is in tune with their purpose, it's everywhere all the time, right? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I dream in poetry, right? When somebody says something that is interesting, I think, oh, that should be a poem. Or um, I come across an image or see, a, see something in the world, then I start to compose um, basically what is lyrics for that situation. They don't always become poems. They're fleeting thoughts sometimes, and sometimes I don't even remember, and sometimes I feel like, oh, I gotta get some paper or something to scribble it down. Um, but I think that I am always on that, which Nathaniel Mackey calls uh, an attunement. So we are always writing until that moment, even before the moment when we put pen to paper or words to screen or whatever. And so for me, it's like, all the time. Is there any specific thing in life that uh, inspire you to write poetry or your source are uh, different? You know, because I'm thinking about it all the time, some of the um, reoccurring 
themes in my poetry have been black men, uh, social justice. I can see that in your text. <laughs> <laughs> black yeah. men, social justice, love, love of black men, loving to get towards social justice, those kinds of things that I think are important. Every once in a while, I will um, decide to compose something on purpose that is different than that, but I am also an activist, right, and a community advocate and activist, and so those things are very important to me, and so I tend to spend my energy there most of the time. Um, I, I, I'm in awe of people who have the privilege to write about things that are, that are like shoes and cats and meadows. Like I'm in awe of those people. And I haven't felt like that's something that I, I haven't been inspired to do that because there's so many things that are important to me above cats and meadows and things like that. Not to knock those poets, I'm just saying, for me, um, poetry is an action verb. Okay. And and it's important for me to address the things that are a part of our world that that need to be addressed, and I do it inside of my purpose, which is poetry. Okay, I know you've been inspired by a family member, but do you have any plan to leave that poetry legacy and uh, your family and the community where you live in Patterson also? <laughs> uh, of course, you know, the people will come to it how they come to it, naturally. Um, but there are some things that we can do on purpose. And for example, tomorrow, I am, um, I shouldn't say tomorrow, soon. I, um, by, by the time we hear this, will be past tense. Yeah. Um, I am the poet for the um, Alonzo Tambua Moody um, social justice program. He is an incredible leader in our community and we are having a school dedicated to him. We are renaming the school in his name. And so I will be there commemorating that day with poetry. And that is uh, an incredible culmination of what I'm talking about here is social justice, okay. it's social change, it's um, black men, it's uh, community activism and all of those things are coming into one place in the 12 stanza poem. And so, yeah, that's a legacy. I think. When uh, you hear Maya Angelou, what does that name mean to you? Love. I love her. I love her. It, um, she is iconic. She has left a, a clear path and very, very strong shoulders upon which to stand. And I, I remember her passing away. In the morning, I was in the shower. I didn't know she passed away and my chest hurt and I wrote a poem in the shower because I'm always thinking about poetry. Wow. And then I got up and later on and I went and out and I, saw, you. and I saw um, that she had passed and it was devastating. That, that brought tears to my eyes. You shouldn't do that. I'm wearing makeup. I'm so um. sorry, <laughs> but we cannot talk about poetry without... Without these icons. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to a friend. I was saying maybe... I might be wrong. For me, this year is a year of poetry. Why? Because I think there is a Zoom that project on poetry because of uh, Goldman. I don't know when the name of this young poet girl said to you, what, what do you see when you say uh, like uh, Amanda Goldman as a young girl uh, doing what she's doing right now. I think the young people has a different perspective about poetry. Do you think that can help the young people who doesn't want to really uh, embrace poetry? Well, Amanda Gorham is transformative. She, um, she has introduced poetry to children, to elders, to people who didn't even think about She's thinking so about many, it. But yeah. She, yeah, she she is transformative. And even if a person, people have been asking me, what about her poem? And to me, um, um, it doesn't matter what we think about her poem. Because what the poetry, it is a powerful poem by many standards. Yes. Um, by many standards. 
but she um, she is doing something that that doesn't the actual words is, are relevant. Is she saying of something of substance? Yes, she is. Is she saying something about um, our world? Yes, she is. Um, but the fact that she's bringing a conversation, the fact that you uttered her name, exactly. is is more important. Can we say she become any... a voice? Oh, absolutely, she has become a voice. You know, and and I. This is going to sound strange, but work with me with this. Amanda was stopped recently by a security guard because she looked suspicious when she was leaving a building. And I thought, oh, that is wonderful. That is so wonderful because the world knows who she is and she has the skill base and the, um, the potential to write about that experience in a way that can reverberate over the exactly. entire globe. So I was really excited, not that, about her having that painful experience, but that she has the exact tool base to bring attention to what happened to her and that we are continuing to have this experience in the United States, whether you are um, you know, the poet laureate for the country or fill in the blank, whomever else in this world. So I am, I'm excited about her voice because she is doing the right thing with it. And, um, you know, there's always going to be somebody that says X, Y, Z person deserves it more. It doesn't, none of that is, none of that is exactly. important. The important thing is that she is doing the right thing with her and life. And let her do her thing. Let her do it. She just just rock it out. Yeah. Thank you, Talena. We really appreciate your time. We wish you a happy World Poetry Day. Thank I hope you. we will have a chance to talk more about it and uh, different occasions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for, for this for your questions. Rasha Dwai, we are so glad you are here with us tonight. Can you tell us in a couple words what does poetry mean to you? Um, poetry means to me is uh, I know it's, it's different for everybody, but for me, poetry is. It's the only thing I've ever been affirmed at. Anyone, anyone's told me I'm good at. So it's become my life. I know it's not that for everyone, but for me, poetry is my life. It's something to pour my passion, energy, and dedicate myself into, and I need that. How was poetry? Was I introduced to you, or did you start? Um, my uncle and my dad were both uh, performers. My dad's a jazz singer, and my uncle was a poet when, when he was living. So uh, when I went to poet, when I went, whenever I hung out with them, I'd be in Brooklyn, D.C., uh, all over Jersey, Pennsylvania, just in the crowd during their shows, and that's how I grabbed onto it. Okay, when uh, you're watching TV today, you see this young girl uh, reading her poetry. What do you feel? I'm talking about Goma. Amanda. Okay. Um, proud, you know, um, as. The former poet laureate of the Jersey City, I'm a peer and I get to see someone my age reach that national stage, you know. So yeah. Uh, we know in this time we are living, like so many young like you choose to take uh, different directions with their life. Can we say that uh, poetry uh, puts you on the right path and save you from different trouble in life? Yeah, if it wasn't for poetry, um, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of different ways that my life could have ended up. And because I stepped into poetry, I was allowed to put other people on the same path, put other people on better paths. Poetry isn't really about doing like a specific thing or a task or a skill to be good at. Poetry is about being good at affecting other people. Or at least it has been for me. I think this is the same problem I was talking to Queen. Like some people expect uh, government to have some specific text and different way or in their own way. Or the poetry gives you freedom to do your thing your way. You don't have to follow somebody's direction or any line of philosophy in life. I agree. Um, I attack poetry as a performer, as someone in theater. The rappers think of themselves as poets. Uh, videographers think of themselves as poets, as storytellers. The singers. It's different for everyone, yeah. And no one's way is wrong. Yeah. 
Today, March 21st, it's uh, World Poetry Day. What does that mean to you as a poet? Um, I'm probably on the other side of the spectrum. I really enjoy poetry as a daily event and something that should be celebrated and evoked 24-7, you know? Um, it's nice to have recognition. Let's take it a step further. Thank you. Do you make money from uh, writing poetry? Um, or? I have a book that's published. Mm -hmm. I make sales off of that. And uh, I also support myself as a performer and uh, someone that teaches performance and poetry and writing. Thank you, man, for being with us today. We mm -hmm. wish you happy World Poetry Day. Enjoy Thank you, everybody. Soon. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you, man. Thank you, everyone, for spending your time with us today. We were talking with uh, the Patterson Poetry Laureate, Talina Lachelle Queen, and Richard Wright. Thank you so much. My name is Eve. I will uh, meet you next time for another interview.